The biggest thing you mentioned there is understanding the program, right? So you have to know the identity of what this place is about. I feel like I have a good grasp on that. Um, secondly, you know, how does the department run? I think we're a primary resource to the coaches because they're the ones on the front line when they go out and recruit. They're the ones that go in the schools. They're the ones that when the kids come on campus have to be personable because that's who they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis if they decide to sign with us. So we have to make sure that their vision is echoed through us. All right. Secondly, I think that there's a huge battle in recruiting right now of how that vision's portrayed. I know what Wisconsin offers. I think it's pretty darn good, but Joe Recruit out there doesn't know that. And the further they get away from home base, they might have never even heard of that if they're from somewhere on the fringe of the country. I need to bridge that gap. And there's a lot of ways to do it, but as you know, we're all you know, growing up in America right now, there's so much information flooded at these kids that they become numb to it. They start not seeing the billboards. So what's the point of getting a billboard in the first place? So I gotta find new ways to bridge that gap for them and get them to understand that Wisconsin's an excellent place to look at, an excellent place to get a degree, an awesome college experience, all those things, but that takes time, that takes resources, so that's the battle. You know, the, true, true. You know, I've, I've been a coach for a while, loved it, had a great experience, coached a lot of good players. Um, I think if this was a sudden transition, it would have been tough, but it was something that Paul and I had been talking about for a while. It was something I recognized myself. So it was more of a communal decision instead of a dictator decision, if that makes sense. And that's one of the beauties about him as a mentor, a leader of this program, is he's going to make decisions with you, not for you. Are there any plans to increase the size of the recruiting staff and the support staff? And how do you compete with some of those schools that have exponentially larger support staff? Than that? It's a great question. I'm going to answer it two ways. A, yes, there are definitely plans in place, but B, we'd also say that it doesn't matter, we're gonna do our best anyway and, and make up the ground however we do. But yeah, we're definitely hiring more people. We got some great people in place already, so I'm pretty excited about that. Great question. So I think, you know, when I mean, you look at the NFL this year, TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year, Jonathan Taylor up for the award of Offense Player of the Year. So we know that young men come through here that have that capability. How do we get more? Maybe it's putting more into evaluations in the first place. So that's something we're doing. Maybe it's, again, helping that communication piece so that, again, Joe Recruit from a long ways away doesn't realize he's a Wisconsin kid till he gets here. Let's start getting them here. So I think there's kind of a two-pronged approach. It's the recruiting aspect, the salesman aspect, you might say. But then it's also just showing them that, hey, the development hasn't changed here. You're still going to grow more as a freshman to a senior in this program than you will almost anywhere else. So again, bridging that gap, showing them that information. I'm excited about it. I think, I think it's very doable. It's just making sure we do it the right way. Do you have a set number of like how many you will hire and what type of role that you're envisioning them? I uh, definitely have a good vision for them. Um, the number, I'm not too worried about yet. Just know it's more. <laughs> I guess, what is it in particular about this role that you're excited about to be able to you know, talk to these recruits and really build those relationships? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I've always been good at building the relationships. I like dealing with people. Um, even, you know, some coaches, complain about the recruiting aspect of all the travel. Yeah, sitting on a plane's not fun, but like when I was going into high schools, I loved that. Sitting down with mom and dad, thrilled about that. So that piece is good for me. Um, and then the other part is just the innovative, the creative that's, that's afforded us now. I mean, in any of our jobs, no matter what you're doing, you want the freedom from your boss to grow and develop and kind of go execute on your own. You don't want to be micromanaged. We definitely aren't here. And I wasn't as a coach, and I know I definitely won't be as in this recruiting role. Um, so he's given me the freedom to go out and attack it as long as it's part of the Wisconsin vision. And secondly, I can you know, have room to expand and create. I mean, every year is different in recruiting now. Every class changes because, oh, there's a new service available. There's a new rule in place. They take a rule away five years later, and now you got to do that different. I mean, June officials, that wasn't even a thing to guys that are still on our team. You know, I'm talking to Scott Nelson getting ready for Pro Day, and he's like, yeah, I came in the summer. That was my first time seeing Wisconsin, and it was four hours with me on campus 
just kind of driving them around. Like now there's an official visit, there's a whole weekend involved, so they're getting a whole different experience than even current players are. That's gonna keep happening year after year. I'm gonna keep being creative and innovative and going after it, so we're on the forefront of it. Um, but no, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, and we'll have certain people that are more hands-on with that than others, so it's kind of siloing and finding who's got those kind of skill sets. Um, but yeah, transfer portal is huge right now. You got to have somebody that's probably looking at it every day, um, allocating time to it. It goes like this because after the season, after spring ball, those things are going to ramp up and then they're going to quiet back down. So, And the evaluation process when it comes to transfers is a whole different timeline. You might have a day or a week to turn that whole thing around and see what's real and what's not. High school, it's an ongoing year by year basis. So you got to have a whole different mindset when you look at it. Great question, because I've gotten asked that one before. Um, I don't look at it like that, but I've always looked at things kind of positive mindset, and I see the opportunities here for me to grow professionally, personally. Um, the challenges I've faced in the last three months are so much more broad and new to me than what I was dealing with as a coach towards the last few years as I was getting comfortable. So all of a sudden, I'm out of my comfort zone. I mean, I am waking up before the alarm clock goes off because my head's going off, bing, 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 I need to make this phone call, connect this. That's a good sign. Um, and I learned that, I mean, the whole reason I got into football to begin with, getting on kind of a personal track here. I was in business school, I was getting my degree, I had some jobs lined up. They, my wife would have loved them because they were nice and cushy back in St. Louis where we could have had the whole white picket fence thing. And uh, we had a Navy SEAL come talk to us and he said, your growth is determined by two things. How hard is that challenge you're going after and what's the energy you put into it? So this is a new challenge that's more monumental than me just being tight end coach one more year and I'm attacking it with everything I got. So I know that my growth next year, 10 years from now, is gonna be so much better, no matter what I'm doing then, because of what I'm doing right now. I know you're new to this position, but I was just wondering, what's your sense on how name, in, name image likeness is impacting recruiting with all the collectives that are popping up, and how might that affect the fun specifically? Oh, it's huge. You know, I think the first thing to understand about NIL is that the support from our Wisconsin alumni base and our community can match almost anybody. So we cannot you know, be the connector of those things, but being able to tell a young man that, hey, just look at our current team and what they're expanding upon. And A, the whole landscape is a whole knowledge-based landscape. I mean, this again, didn't exist two years ago. So we've gotta be on the forefront of gaining that education for our guys currently and all the recruits that come in. What they wanna know when they get on campus is A, that you've got a plan in place, there's resources for them to touch base into, and as long as they focus on being quality people, quality football players, those are going to be there for them. So we're putting that into place for them. So with, when it comes to your role too, is there like a GM aspect to where the roster management, or is that not a kind of There, there will definitely be some of that. Yeah. Kind of like their traits. Yeah, and is there a certain system that you're looking at, or like how do you? So yeah, how you break this down and what you're looking for? I'll answer both. So I think the more experience you have in this program, kind of leading all the way up to the head coach, gives you that evaluation weight. The less you start at the bottom. So how do we take the thousands upon thousands of high school applicants and tighten that up to where by the time it gets to a coach, a coordinator, a, a head coach. He's got everything he needs to make a decision, yes or no, in a timely manner. Because we all know Paul's time goes quick. Um, we have those in place. We have a system set up to where we can say, you're in charge of level one. You make sure that goes into level two. Because as that funnel tightens down, we don't want to miss anybody. We don't want to have anything fall off to where someone goes to a rival and we didn't know about them or we relate to the process. So we're getting those things done to where now we have the resources and we have the structure that we can make sure we get that. Because when it comes to the eval side, I trust all the coaches and their eyes. I trust the people that are feeding the information to them. I know that I'm involved in that. So I don't think we'll miss on any of that part. We just got to make sure we have something to start at the top that gets it down to those important people. Does that make sense?
started and this confidence you have until that conclusion came to be that you accepted? It was something probably as soon as the bowl game was over, all the way up until kind of the announcement was made that we were working through together. Yeah, and it was, I mean, hour long plus conversations on it, you know, just just how to set everything up the right way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I, I know you're not all here for that story, but uh, that was in business school. Uh, his name's Eric Reidens. Um, you know, served tours. He was a Golden Glove boxer, uh, served in the Peace Corps. Like the guys on all American on a lot of fronts. But anyway, um, he delivered that message in one of our strategy classes in business school. It's like a leadership type course. Yeah, so it's like he's a perfect example. Everybody's got. They're good and they're bad. So he, that's part of his good. I'm going to steal from him. And then you go read another book and you steal that from them and read a book on Jordan and grab that one. But yeah, it's, really everybody else, that determines who we become. You, you're a, a reflection of the five people closest to you. So surround yourself with those people. Sorry, I'm getting on a soapbox. OK, what's next? I, you know, I saw the crew talk about a, a, a virtual visit. Uh, you know, how, during these spring practices, how are you trying to manage both having Visits, but also yep. that yeah, that kind of comes down to the strategy. So it's so much easier for young men to get a good experience on campus now. So step one, get them to campus, right? Get to a spring practice, uh, get to something in the summer. We had some basketball games previously. We had a bunch of kids come in because now we can show them almost what you could show them on an official visit. They just have to get there, get here themselves. So it's get to campus. For those that are further away or maybe don't have the resources, now comes in a lot of the technology. You got Zoom, you got phone calls, you got FaceTime, uh, all the social media stuff, which, I mean, the kids, they just keep kind of bouncing, staying one step ahead of the parents. So it's like we're constantly pulling them. Um, but there's a lot of ways to touch them, you know, and, and if they'll give us the time, that's, that's probably a great indicator of if someone's truly interested. Will they return a phone call? Will they return a text? How do they do it? If they're willing to say, Coach, I'll sit down with you for 45 minutes, on Zoom and hear about your program, they're definitely interested, so let's knock it out of the park. And that might lead someone who normally wouldn't travel all the way to Wisconsin actually coming here. And then they might come back and we'll just keep stacking that up. Again, like what we have to offer, as you know, like you guys have been on the program, is pretty darn special, but there's so much of a breadth of, we could take a whole day on academics, we could take a whole day on football, we could take a whole day on just community life and campus and go see some of the clubs or hang out with the players for a day. We've sent kids to classes. That takes time. Keep coming back, keep getting to know us, because once they do, it'll stand up against anybody. But if they're looking to make a quick decision or they're looking to base it off of something that's not real, something they got in the mail, it's tough. What did you learn about yourself as a recruiter when you were the tight end coach here that you're applying to this event? Um, you know, even from back when I was a player, just hosting kids when they came in, um, you can really relate to anybody if you take the time and get to know them. So you have to truly be interested in other people. Everybody's got something they know that you don't, so that makes them more important to you in some facet. So actually get, take the time to get to know them, and you'll find that path that crosses over. Hey, we grew up with the same person. Hey, we actually traveled to the same spots. You, we studied the same thing. So now that I look at it with that perspective, I, I don't really walk into too many conversations that I can't bridge that, that difference somehow. I think, I think your enthusiasm for this job is pretty apparent. What, oh, good. <laughs> what are some things you feel like you're still learning or you need to kind of get set as you get into this season, important summer months? You know, there's just, there's a lot of red tape when it comes to college football recruiting. There's, and I'm not even talking about just the rule book, which is its own animal. But I mean, how you handle your systems, it's not like a good old VHS and you just have a guy in the back room and you're like, ask Boomer or, you know, whoever it may be. So it's just kind of like, okay, who do I call when I need tech services for this? Or who's got the password for that one account that log in, you know? Um, that's something that a, a program that's, you know, like if you ask Paul something about that football-wise, he knows the answer because he's been living it. I'm new into this, so I have to relearn a lot of those little things. The, the substance part, the recruiting part, easy peasy. It's just all that other red tape. Sure. Do you think something, not having somebody in charge of this, you know, big side left, put you guys behind it all, and whether this class or that class, whatever, went on the road? I don't want to look at it that way. No, because um, we had, you know, some people last year that were filling the blanks and working their tails off to do it. Um, Megan's been here for a year and she's like a utility knife. I mean, she's the one I go to for all those random questions. Um, so it's not like we're starting from scratch. We're, we're turning the engine back on in some spots, you know what I mean? And we're putting a lot more fuel on it now, which is good. 
but if it's a question I have, it takes me five minutes to find it. It's not like I have to spend all day trying to get something set up. Does that help? Yeah. Is your former room, how do you think Chris, you've known Chris for quite a while, how do you think he'll work with the tight end coming up? I think he'll do a great job. I mean, the benefit is they know him, right? He's already been here for a number of years. They, he's already coached them in some kind of special teams capacity. So they understand his style, they respect him. So it, that's kind of the first thing as a coach that you have to get across to him is if you're brand new, do they even trust you yet as your character and your core? And your, okay, once they figure that out, they'll go to battle with you. They know that about Chris. So secondly, it's just getting used to his style a little bit. Maybe he raises his voice at a certain time that I wouldn't have, but then it's quieter when I would have been amped up. It's just kind of getting that flow with him. But I can already tell that you know they're, they're not missing a beat.